Hey there, folks. Welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the brand new album from Jennifer Lopez, titled AKA. You know what kind of amazes me? That it's been over 15 years since Jennifer Lopez released her first album. It definitely amazes me that this is her eighth studio album over the course of those 15 years and that people are actually requested that I cover this album in some way shape or form. It amazes me because I for the life of me do not understand the continued musical appeal of Jennifer Lopez outside of the Hispanic demographic or hell even inside of it. JLo began her career in TV and movies before jumping into the oversaturated pop diva scene of the late 90s and for a few years she was very successful there. However However, retrospectively going back to that material, I can say that the majority of it isn't exactly good. She never had the pipes of a Christina Aguilera or a Jessica Simpson or the creative songwriting of Shakira, instead riding the Latin trend of the time before transitioning into R&B and, you know, giving the locks a legitimate charting hit, so I guess I can thank her for that. It didn't help matters that songs like I'm Real and Jenny from the Block tried to coast by on assertions of realness and down-to-earth authenticity that just plainly did not reflect her multi-millionaire lifestyle and her tabloid fixture romances. And now eventually hip-hop got dirtier and Jennifer Lopez's material actually got milder, which led to her mid-period albums not exactly catching on and for her to star in a succession of terribly forgettable romantic comedies after the hilarious catastrophe that was Jiggly. But yet in 2011, thanks to the rise of Pitbull, Jennifer Lopez's musical career got a second wind and began to ride a second smaller Latin wave that saw Enrique Iglesias and even her ex-husband Mark Antony return to the chart. And look, the hits that JLo charted in this wave of dance pop, they weren't bad, but at the same time, we weren't exactly short on pop divas in that particular time making club songs. With, let's see, Rihanna, Kesha, Beyonce, Katy Perry, Lady Gaga, Pink, Britney Spears, and even Christina Aguilera returning to the pop sphere, what unique elements did Jennifer Lopez bring to the table to make her stand out and look special? And thus, look, I was planning on skipping this album, because while Pitbull's career has somehow managed to hold steam despite his consistently awful lyrics, the club boom, it's over, and somehow I did not get the feeling that JLo was going to be jumping on the EDM trend like Pitbull did, so I had no idea what to expect from this album, especially considering 26 different producers were involved with making this record. But I figured what the hell and I gave it a listen anyway. What did I find? Well, we got pretty much the only thing we could have expected from Jennifer Lopez at this point in her career. A profoundly confused mess of a record that attempts to slam together modern trends in pop and hip-hop with a half-hearted stab at cohesion or an interesting sound. And you know what? This could have made for an interesting album if the modern trends that this album borrowed from had the slightest hint of a pulse. In other words, especially by Jennifer Lopez standards, AKA is an utterly forgettable album that with its dismal first week sales and mixed at best reactions from critics will likely be considered a footnote in pop music this year, if that. So, okay, what went wrong here? Well, I think the best place to start would be in the production and the instrumentation, of which the best word to describe it would probably be unfinished. It's a little startling considering how many producers were involved with the making of this record that it feels so unfocused and sloppy, seldom if ever building to a satisfying climax or even to a decent dance beat. I might not have liked Jennifer Lopez's last album, but at least Dance Again and On the Floor had some propulsive energy and spark. Here the synths are watery, shrill, and sound imported from cheap keyboard presets. The percussion is leaden or so heavily trap inspired to lose all unique flavor, and the production is so cavernous that it frequently feels that Jennifer Lopez gets lost in her own music. Now, I'm not saying there are moments that I didn't mind. The guitar lead on Never Satisfied, that wasn't bad. And the balance of strings and guitar on Let It Be Me, that easily knocked that song up to being probably the best on the album. But the majority of this production falls into the same trap as most modern pop music does, in emphasizing percussion and beats over melody, which makes a lot of this album just incredibly instantaneously forgettable. Now, granted, the lyrics don't exactly help matters. It's a very sad sign when one of the better guest verses off this album is from Rick Ross on Worry No More. And honestly, his verse isn't half bad because he does lend this album a little bit of class that does 
to fit the production and is desperately needed. Outside of that, the only other guest verse that isn't a complete waste of time is probably from Iggy Azalea on acting like that, but even that verse lacks flavor. It's not one of her better ones, but you know what? At least it feels cohesive and competently structured in comparison to some of the other guest verses. T.I.'s verse on the title track features some of the laziest rapping that he's ever put on wax. Booty shows Pitbull just embarrassing himself again in a song that's already focused on J.Lo's ass, so it's already an embarrassment. And French Montana proves that on I Love Ya Poppy that his brief moment of being tolerable on Miley Cyrus's song F.U. was mostly because he was marginalized as much as possible. But you know what, even beyond that, the lyrics on this album are painfully generic and forgettable at best, if not just stepping into the flat out stupid. I already mentioned I Love You Poppy, but dear God. God, there's nothing sexy. No, Jennifer Lopez repeating that phrase until your brain hemorrhages. The sad fact is that Booty is slightly more tolerable because it at least tries having a propulsive beat, albeit with an irritating as all hell melody. But then again, it's Jennifer Lopez singing a song about her ass. But even the ballads on this record aren't all that impressive either. Take Emotions, which feature the oh-so-poetic lyrics, I feel good cause I don't feel bad. Or, broke your heart so you can feel it, and other slams against this ex-boyfriend in question who really didn't appear to do much in the song all that bad outside of not giving J-Lo as much time as she wanted. So let me ask the question, why are we supposed to sympathize with Jennifer Lopez on this song again? And look, the poetry here is even poor by pop standards, and it becomes hard to take seriously when J-Lo is trying her best on some of these songs to sell it. And that takes us to Jennifer Lopez herself. And you know what, let me start by saying that I get some of J-Lo's appeal, because honestly, she's got a lot of charisma and personality when she wants to let it shine through. That's why I've always thought that she was a pretty good actress, even though she got stuck with consistently terrible screenplays. And on the right dance tracks, she can bring a lot of vivacious energy that really stands out. And yet this album seems to do everything in its power to render her completely anonymous. Between the auto-tune and the abuse of reverb that keeps happening, J-Lo sounds swallowed up up by her own mix, and there are very few points where it requires her to sound invested or actually belt and deliver some power here. And this takes us to the biggest issue of this album. What does Jennifer Lopez bring to this music that any other pop diva that I've covered this year doesn't. In the past six months, I've covered Leah Michelle, Kylie Minogue, Shakira, Christina Perry, Lily Allen, Foxes, and Cher Lloyd. That's just in six months here. So. What exactly is Jennifer Lopez bringing to the table that sets her apart, that makes her unique? Why should I care about this album? Because in the end, this record is only memorable because when it sinks to becoming inane and incredibly stupid. And it reeks of having too many producers behind the soundboard to deliver anything with any sort of flavor. And what's worst about all this is that even on the very lowest common denominator of dance music, when the leaders can be stupid and they can get away with it, there's no potent or creative grooves or melodies that stuck with me whatsoever on this album. Thankfully, it's less aggressively terrible or infuriating to me than some records, which knocks this record up to a 4 out of 10, but it's not something I can ever recommend, even to J-Lo fans. She's capable of better music than this, and she shouldn't be reduced to singing songs about her ass with Pitbull in order to get a hit. So, if we want that to stop, skip this album. <sighs> So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. On July 12th, I'm going to be re-reviewing an album from 2013. Either they're an album I've already covered or a new album that you guys want to suggest. So leave your suggestions in the comments, and the one that gets the most over the past couple of videos will be the one that I choose. And if there's any other albums coming out this year that you want me to take a look at, or if there's anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. So until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.